All right, I'm installing uh, my dash cam into my new vehicle. I took it out of my uh, previous Chevrolet Volt and I'm installing it into a 2018 uh, Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. What you need to do this, other than of course the dash cam itself, um, is some of these uh, fuse taps. Now these are really handy because what you do with these is you remove the fuse that is in your uh, passenger fuse box and then you replace it with this tap. And what this lets you do is actually uh, keep the fuse in place for whatever uh, device is fused and then add a fuse as well for your dash cam. So it lets you tap into the the power in the vehicle without you know sacrificing you know the the fuse for the 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 accessory that you're you're tapping into, and and you can get these on Amazon. Uh, so pick up the taps and then also uh, some spare fuses as well. I also have these uh, these plastic uh, trim tools or, or auto trim tools. They are so handy to have. You can make use without these if you wrap like the ends of a, of a flathead screwdriver in electrical tape so you're not doing any damage, but uh, I, I find these to be super handy. So how does dash cam wiring work? Well, it's very easy uh, from a basic high level. Uh, you have your, your red, which is your switch, uh, your black, which is your, your ground, and then uh, your yellow, which is your power. The yellow wire will be your constant power. Your red wire will be your uh, switched wire so your dash cam knows when to power up. All right, so um, it's gonna vary on what vehicle you have, but quite often uh, right underneath the, the, the steering wheel is gonna be your, your passenger fuse box. Uh, on the Chevrolet Volt, it was on this side. In the Mitsubishi, it's, it's right here. And it's actually, this one's tucked in quite, quite a bit in the back there. Yeah, so in the manual or online in the manual, you'll find a, uh, a diagram for your passenger fuse locations. And uh, they're all numbered and then they're all laid out here. So, um, as I said, I, I'm going to go with the, the uh, hazard warning flasher for my constant power. So I'm gonna know that's number 12, which is right there. And I actually tapped into the outside rear view mirrors, uh, which was number 22 for me for the uh, switched uh, on and off power to the dash cam. So I have my taps here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go under the uh, the dash here and through the hole in the back and feed these around and the, the wire will come out. Okay, there we have it. Uh, lots of room to work with. Normally they're not so deep in there so that might be a challenge to, to reach in there and hold the camera but I'm gonna pull the, the fuses that match the, the, the diagram I looked at earlier and uh, tap them in with these. Okay, I was able to reach in there and pull one out. Uh, I had to use these really long pliers and what I've done is I've actually wrapped the tips in electrical tape. You don't want to be shoving <laughs> metal prongs into your fuse, uh, into your fuse box. That's a, that's a big no-no, but I, I've got it out. I'm going to take the fuse here and just stick it in those two slots. And that is what it looks like when it's all in there. Now I'm just going to reinsert this into the, into the, uh, the fuse box. All right, I got him in there. It was a huge pain in the butt because it's just so, it's so deep down in there that you can't, <laughs> you can't uh, get it done. If you don't have really long needle nose pliers like I did, uh, you will have a struggle, but most vehicles don't have it sunken in deep. Normally they're, they're almost flush with the, uh, with the panel here, but they're in there. Uh, and the last thing I have to do is to uh, attach this ground. And I think I'll do that right here. All right, there it is, it's grounded. I used a 10 millimeter wrench for that one. And uh, we're pretty much all wired up under here. So the best way to go about this now is to have a good idea of where your dash cam is gonna live. You know, my, my dash cam is gonna live maybe right in, in this area. I'll need maybe about that much, I guess, slack or, or left in the cord so I can plug it in, you know, comfortably. So knowing that that's the case, I'll start here and I'll start tucking this under the trim and working my way back towards the uh, the fuse box instead of starting down there and working my way up. This way, if there's any slack and I have extra, I can put it in that bundle that I'm going to zip tie and not have it, you know, dangling down here. So now that I've gotten to this point, I'm going to use my uh, my trim tools here to very gently pull this this open and tuck the wire underneath 
um, and then I'll get get over to this point and I'm going to do the same thing. Now I'm working my way down uh, again on this vehicle. It's super easy. I'm just sliding it under there and it's finding it's almost like it was made for this. Like you, I've struggled with this a lot in the past, but uh, this actually isn't so bad. Uh, as you can see, I'm even doing it one handed. I'm done this part. So I've gone all the way down here, just sticking this in here and giving it a little a little pull. Sorry. That gave me enough to just shove the wire in and it's completely hidden. You, you can't even tell. Uh, so yeah, we did. There was some excess, like I said. There was there was actually a little less than I thought, but still, um, there is some excess. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wrap this all up nice and nice and neat, and then use a zip tie here to to zip tie it so it's a, a small little package in there and, and not uh, in the way of anything. Okay, so the second part of this, uh, I have a rear-facing component to this back cam, as you can. I don't know why my phone's not focusing on it. There we go. So I have it already um, mounted on my rear windshield here. Um, and then I have this long cable that, uh, I guess terminates or ends at a, this, which goes to the, all the way up there to the front, uh, dash cam. So you can have, uh, front and rear recording at the same time. So when I had this installed in my Volt, I did something similar to what I'm going to do here. Um, if you had the time and were so inclined, you could pull back this trim, feed it through, come through here, under here, pull this back and pull it out. I'm not going to do that. Um, I, I had it for years. This is a couple years old now uh, with my Chevrolet Volt and no problems uh, kind of just tucking it in here and then just kind of having it exposed. Make sure there's a, you know, enough enough slack here. So when you open and close it, it'll have a little a little amount here. OK, so but for the, this rear dash cam, uh, the cable is going to uh, go all the way to the front there. Now, what I've done um, just I've kind of mocked in my, you know, I went through and I, you know, I tacked one thing and then I tacked one end and I, and I pulled it along kind of like that. And then I moved on to the next one and I got an idea of how much slack is going to be left over with. And the concern here is, you know, you don't want it dangling back here. You don't want it dangling up front. So I'm, I'm going to actually start at the front and start tucking it in along the trim. And then back here, I think I could probably squeeze a lot of the excess down into these these panels here. Um, so I've I've located this as my likely area to have some excess spot to throw that excess. So something to keep in mind when do, doing this in your vehicle, whether it's for this or another one, if you're going to have excess, try to find those spots before you, you know, start hiding the wire. So uh, here's my rear cam and it's uh, into the trim here. Down here it pops out, goes behind this uh, weather stripping and then down under here. And again, I was able to tuck everything, every excess, piece of excess into this panel here. And really, this is all you see. Uh, it looks pretty, you know, it's within reason for me. You can pop this whole thing off. You can feed it through here. You can pop these these clips off and, and, and completely hide it. If if this much for you isn't isn't something you want to see, I mean, this it will it, it won't kink or bend you know like i said i had it for years like that in my other vehicle no no signs of wear or any stress on the on the cable i'll show some some clips of uh how this dash cam works how well it works and uh you can see some front and rear and then a link to this cam is in the in the description below uh, affiliate links for the uh the cables as well as some of these tools that i've used but yeah, I, like I said, it's, it's been very clean, very, uh, you know, it, it takes a couple hours at most to get these installed. If you've never done it before, give yourself a little extra time. But uh, it, it's really a straightforward process and you don't have to spend the hundreds of dollars to have one of this car stereo places or, or electronics places install these for you. You can do it yourself.